the light of Christ. The light of The light of Christ. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud, almighty King's trial. Be glad, let her be glad. As glory floods her, a blaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to all gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. Therefore, therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy night, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty. 
thought he who has been pleased to number me as so unworthy among the Levites may pour into me his light unshadowed that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your arms and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to be right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only he begotten. For our sake paid Adam's death to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you let our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christians believers apart from worthy vices and the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to him in his holy one. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not had been redeemed. O order of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, oh, happy fall, that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, Worthy to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. And this is the night of which it is written. The night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness and washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. 
On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering. The work of bees and of your servants' hands, and evening sacrifice of praise. This gift from your most holy church, but now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames, undivided yet never dim, by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wine, drawn out by mother bees, and to build a torch so precious. Oh, oh, oh truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray that you, that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere on dim to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found, still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ our Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed. The first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin 
and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land, the earth, in the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures. And on the earth, let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was. And God blessed them, saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, and all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the seas, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. 
I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed. The sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth in all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham. A reading from the book of Genesis. God. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love 
and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well. And with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulder. While he himself carried the fire and the knife, as the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out, took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the last thing to him. Do not do the least thing to him. I know, I know now how you are devoted you are to God. Since you do not withhold from me your own beloved son, as Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went up and took the ram, and he offered it as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yera. Hence people now say, On the mountain the Lord will see. Again the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declare the Lord, that because you acted as you did, in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars. On the skies and the sands of the seashore, your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Is everything good now? Okay, I was on push to talk. Sorry. Let me try that again. Our reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hands outstretched over the sea, split the sea into two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and chariots. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and chariots. The angel of God who has been leading Israel camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became darker, and thus the night passed, without the rival camp coming any closer all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea. With a strong east wind through the night, and so turned it into dry land, when the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to the right and then to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh, horses and chariots and chariots went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian forced to glance that threw into a panic, and he so clogged for the chariot wheel that they could hardly drive. When the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians, then the Lord told Moses, a stretch out your hand, over to the sea that the water may flow back up to the Egyptians upon their chariots and their chariots. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flew back to its normal death. Oh, the Egyptians were fleeting hands onto the sea when the Lord hurled them back into its midst. And the water, as the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the chariots of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seahorse, and behold, and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites said, Sang the song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he for he is gloriously triumphed. Horse and chariots he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your master is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. A redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. God, God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit. A wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with great tenderness I'll take you back in an outburst of wrath. For a moment I hid my face from you, but with enduring love I take pity on you, says the Lord, the Redeemer. This was for me like the days of Noah, when I saw the waters of Noah that shall, should never deluge the earth. So I've sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills are be shaken, my love never shall leave you. Nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm batter and con unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelian, in foundations and sapphires. I'll make your battlements of rubies and your gates of carbences, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You will, you, you who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. While you spend your money for what is not bread, you wage for what falls to satisfy. Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew your... I will I will renew with you the the everlasting event the benefits assured to David as I made him as I made him a witness to the peoples a leader and commander of nations so shall you summon a nation you know knew not and nations that you knew not you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the holy one of Israel who has glorified you seek the Lord who, while he may be found, call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy. To our God, who is generous and forgiving, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as for the, from the heaves the rain and snow come down, and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my words that goes forth from my mouth, my words shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I send it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh
A reading from the prophet, from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the command of life. Listen and now know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Have you ever walked in the way of God? You would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days in life, where the light of the eyes and peace, who has found the place of wisdom, who has entered into her treasuries. The one who knows all things know her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who establishes the earth for all time, and filled it with the four-footed beast. He who dismisses the light and departs, calls it, and obeys him trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, he, they answer, Here we are, shining with the joy for their maker. Such is our God, no other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding, and has given her to Jacob his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God and the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those who die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light towards splendor. Give not your glory to another. Your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Before I pour poured out my fury upon them, because of the blood that they have poured on the ground, and because they defiled it with idols, I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conducts and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name. Because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore to say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. <coughs> I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose, whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When in their sight I prove my holiness through you, for I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies stony hearts, and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism unto death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be a slavery to sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath of the first day of the as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, pulled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go and quickly tell his disciples. He had been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearfully yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord.
In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our good God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, her blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cleanus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, Paul, Cosmos, and Damon, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Este es el sacramento de nuestra fe. Anunciamos tu muerte, proclamamos tu resurrección. Ven, Señor, ven, Señor, ven, Señor,
Who else also your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, grant some same share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And let us who beseech you into their company, and not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Peripso met cum ipso et in ipso est ibi deo patri omnipotenti in unitate spiritus sancti omnis honor et gloria per omnia secula seculorum command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day Lead us and not 